So, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Hao Chen. Uh, here to present a work that uh, our group have done uh, at Gexi, which is a consulting company in Japan. We do a bunch of work, including Okamo. Uh, and, uh, well, it's a very long subtitle. And actually, reading it again, I figured out that probably we shouldn't use the word library, but took it so it's easier to understand, but it is a library. Uh, let's read it again. Uh, let's read it together. So Bind.oj is the name of our library, or took it, and uh, on the highest level, it is a data type-centric generative programming took it for real-world programming in Ocamo. What does that mean? Well, I'm going to unpack uh, in a few seconds. So firstly, uh, I, would, I would like to discuss about the name. Uh, why is it called Bind.oj? Well, or another question is why do we pronounce it bind doge? Um, actually, the name doesn't matter. Uh, we just wanted to have a, have a name, but uh, it does have a origin. Uh, like, uh, I mean, the, this library originally have some have something to do with binding. Uh, so, but, I mean, binding generation. So it's bind oh joy. Well, actually, that's a joke. Uh, so originally, it's binding Ocamo and JSON, but uh, uh, in the progress of developing this library, uh, the scope just grew bigger and bigger. So actually, got rid of it and uh, just uh, doing with bind OJ. But uh, it's uh, interesting how to have some name attached, uh, origin to uh, attach to it. So maybe we think binding OCAM with joy would be something good. And that's good. So let's make it official. Uh, so I'm going to change to uh, this project is on GitHub right now. So I'm going to change the readme. Well, probably after the presentation. So, uh, joke aside, um, you, you probably still don't know what bind OJ means. Uh, I'm going to like uh, give a very high level overview first. Uh, so, in a nutshell, nutshell. Uh, so, bind OJ currently have two major parts. The first one reg is regarding type description, mm -hmm. and the second part is about API directory. Uh, so, for the type description part. Uh, it we actually have a a system or like uh, some data structures for you to describe uh, data types as Ocamo, Ocamo values uh, that constitute a, like a mini language if you like, and uh, that mini language allows oops sorry uh, allows a description of primitive types and basic types which I'm going to elaborate later record types and variant types. And uh, once you have the description of the data types, you can generate useful stuff with the uh, type description part of the library. And we also have the API directory part, uh, which gives you a, a mechanism to describe uh, uh, RPC style API endpoints. Here, RPC stands for Remote Procedural Call. Uh, and it's actually describing modules. We can look at that later. And from those, we can automatically derive a well-typed server and the client implementations. Uh, well, because in Socamo, uh, we do that via function application. And uh, uh, we are like almost there to also generate API, uh, open API 3.0 specification. We are, we are actually generating that, but uh, some of the tests are failing. So we hope we can put, like, ship that very soon. So, um, given that like overview, I'm going to give like uh, some very quick examples of both of those parts. Uh, the first one uh, talking about type description. So, just to, to uh, retake. Uh, so, we describe data types as Ocamo values, and we could generate Ocamo type descriptions. I mean, type definitions. That is, that's a typo, as well as JSON code deck. Well, and as well as a structure reflector. We can ignore that for now. And uh, also generate TypeScript type definitions, which is in, in, in correspondence with the uh, specified JSON type format. And as well as for variant types, uh, we, we also generate uh, case analysis because, like in TypeScript, we can do pattern matching, and those will become very handy. And uh, we can also generate JSON schema uh, from the uh, data type descriptions. Uh, and let's look at some code. So here, uh, I have two examples. Uh, on the left hand side is a record kinded data type, and the right hand side is a variant kinded data type. Uh, I 
I believe the definition should be straightforward. So the first let uh, on either side uh, is the, um, the the camel value that you create <coughs> to describe the uh, data type you want, you want to explain. For example, uh, on the right hand side, sorry, left hand side, uh, side uh, we are creating a type called student, which is a record type, uh, and it has two fields: admission year and full name. And admission, uh, admission year is a int type, and the full name is a string type. And from that, we could generate the OCaml type uh, description, uh, which is shown here, uh, which is what you would expect. And uh, very similarly, uh, we can generate a TypeScript uh, description, which is very similar to the OCaml one, except that there's no integer in TypeScript. There's only number, so with number here. And on the right-hand side, it's a little bit more interesting. So we're now having a data type called person, and they are, uh, it's a variant type, uh, and it has three uh, branches. The first one is called anonymous, and it has no parameter. Uh, the second one is with ID, and the parameter is like a tuple-like um, parameters, and it has a singleton integer uh, parameter. And the third one is st called student, and the, uh, it's like a line record. Um, well, it shows that we do support the, the private record type here. Uh, so here we have two uh, fields where we can read them. And uh, the generated OCaml type and the TypeScript type are like, uh, as what you expect for OCaml. And for TypeScript, we're doing something interesting. Uh, there are many, uh, because there is no uh, official way to do ADT in TypeScript, uh, oh, you can you kind of have to have your own preference for it. Um, here we are using what we call a fl flat kind uh, style, which means uh, you have a kind field that uh, tells you uh, which variant it is, and you have the other uh, parameters just uh, at the same level as those. Uh, so that's the basic example of how we could uh, describe data types in Bind.j. And uh, let's have a look at API directory. Um, well, to recap, so with API directory, we're able to describe RPC style HTTP API endpoints, and we call that API directories, uh, which makes sense, I, think, I guess. And from an API, API directory, we can make a well-typed client module to use that API, as well as a server implementation placeholder, um, where we, what we call a server bridge, uh, which uh, with well-typed host to be filled with API implementations. And we could also, well, work in progress, but generate uh, open, uh, open API 3.0 schema, uh, schemas from that. Uh, probably I got this too small. Can everyone read it? Not really. Okay, uh, I'll just like pick, uh, pick the important parts. So on the uh, left, -hand, left hand side, uh, we have a definition of the API directory. The way we do that is that uh, uh, we use some internal API, not internal API, uh, we, we, we call the make registry um, functor, and it's going to create us a registry. And we can call, call on the registry called register get or register post. Uh, that will register the um, endpoint here. And uh, what I want to um, no notice that uh, on this registration, uh, methods, uh, you give a lot of information as well as the the type of the um, of the API. For example, for uh, for the get any student, well, uh, because it's get method, uh, we only have a re uh, result type which is t student. Uh, and for the uh, the poster, well, this get is a little bit uh, misleading, but it's actually a post uh, method. Uh, we have a request type, which, which is t-person, and response type, which is t-student. And here, we're actually using the um, type definition we generated before. Uh, and from this the API directory, it actually contains enough information, uh, well-type information, uh, for the library to generate a server bridge, which is here. And this is actually a full implementation of a ser server. Uh, firstly, uh, by applying the uh, directory to the API handler bridge functor. And it will need a, an L monad um, as parameter. Uh, 
uh, we get a, a the internal stuff to uh, fill the holes. Uh, and here we can register the, the get handler uh, and the post handler, uh, the implementation of those. And we could see that the register get handler uh, has the polymorphic type that uh, you have to match the results type to uh, this, uh, uh, what do we call invocation point. And that information is encoded here. Uh, and that is the same for the register post uh, handler. And this is how you make a server bridge. And uh, we, uh, for the client side, uh, you basically just um, make a monad, oh, sorry, a functor application. Uh, you're passing, uh, you make API client and you're passing director and uh, the fetcher, which, uh, a, which is describe how you can actually make the HTTP request and pass the result as JSON. Um, uh, it's all done for you. So you can do uh, client perform JSON get and you're passing the, um, this evocation point. Uh, and you will be able to get a student. Well, of course, wrapped in the IO monad. And you can do the same for uh, perform JSON post. Uh, but this time you have to give it, give it a, um, a argument of the operator type. So this concludes the very brief introduction. Um, and what are our goals here? Uh, we have three goals by itself. Uh, first, firstly, we would like to help solve data type inter interoperability uh, across languages. And that is addressed using the type description part. And also, we would like to solve the invocation or interoperability ac across system boundaries. Like if you have a server or you have a client, you, you want to be able to uh, like invoke methods like um, easily. Uh, and that is solved by API directory. And there's a third goal we are trying to achieve here, which is to get general metaprogramming capabilities about data types in your Camel. Uh, and uh, with, uh, with other sister projects we are doing right now, uh, we actually aim to create an OCaml centric software development work workflow that is com well compatible and uh, applicable, efficient, and useful within the current landscape of software industry. I wish I'm going to touch that site later uh, if we have time. So uh, our current first focus for this library. Uh, so we do have a very concrete use case in mind with starting developing this, uh, which is that uh, so we're doing some consulting work and our client actually have a project uh, that uh, involves, involves uh, React Native and also SAS style API service. Uh, which uh, is a quite complicated technical stacks. Uh, we use, uh, the, the UI code is written in TypeScript, we are well, we are uh, React Native, uh, partially in ReScript. And the server code is in original camel, but compiled with JSON for camel. And uh, there are some domain specific algorithms written in your camel uh, and compiled with uh, JSON for camel. And uh, we also have iOS and, iOS and Android native code in Swift and Java. So it become very tedious if we do those uh, data type bridging things in, uh, by hand. And also, because uh, uh, it is a SAS SSL APIs, uh, we would like to provide multiple, multiple language client libraries for the API. Um, and uh, it is because of, because of that our current focus is to uh, um, application and business, lo business, lo business logic data type centric and also be able to support the camel uh, native plus JSO uh, camel plus back of script uh, as well as TypeScript, Java, Swift support. So uh, that is a very, okay. A, I don't think I, can, I have time to go into the details. <laughs> I mean, if you are interested, uh, we can talk offline. Uh, well, this slide basically gives uh, what we could express in this cur uh, current uh, system. And um, these slides give you an idea of how you can uh, use the uh, handler bridge and the uh, client. Um, 
Well, one thing I would like to point out is that after you make the uh, handler bridge and you register all your handlers, uh, you can use uh, either the handle path JSON post, handle path JSON get. So you're passing the contextual path as well as the argument uh, to ha have the routing sorted out, sorted out for you. Or if you do know the invocation point, you can also use that directly. And uh, I would like to introduce, introduce a, a few of the notable design choices. The first one is that we use uh, pure OCaml values as the toolkit input, which uh, gives us a, 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 fr uh, a free micro language, the OCaml itself. And also uh, we use only OCam uh, pure OCaml dependencies, uh, which means with minor efforts, it's, uh, we could make this uh, toolkit available to uh, non-OCaml programmers. And uh, well, with the cool, cool uh, meta programming stuff we could do, uh, we could actually do something interesting. Like uh, right now, uh, for example, we're using field and branch descriptions, and which you, which you would like to do a lot in uh, real world programming. And like uh, you can derive data types, and you could also generate data types from dynamic description. For example, from SQL, from JSON schema, from <laughs> ATD uh, definitions. And uh, the, the current status is that it's still in alpha, alpha stage, uh, but uh, it's fairly well tested. And we are using that in a real production uh, project, uh, which is going to come online next month. And uh, the next, uh, next step, uh, which is kind of exciting for PL people, I think, is that we are, uh, we are in the progress of adding uh, session type support to the API directory part. And uh, we're adding support for more target languages, as well as like a support for type Cosmos, which basically allow you to add modularities and mutual re recursive type descriptions. And uh, we're envisioning uh, what we could do with that. We could do a, a, a lot of interesting stuff, like we could generate zippers, uh, like structure web predicted combinators, a lot of stuff we can do. And we can even uh, like, uh, Derive like the object, uh, access, uh, access objects like uh, uh, GUI, or we can go the, the the other direction of like go beyond. All right, uh, I will just skip this. And uh, yeah, so if you're interested, we are uh, open source, and uh, we're looking for looking for adapt uh, adapters, features, uh, suggestions, suggestions, and yeah, I'm ready to take questions. <laughs>